So I was a part of a, a group that went to D.C. in March to talk to elected officials about um, HUD funding and proposed uh, cuts to the federal budget. And we heard a lot of that saying, oh, don't worry, don't worry, this isn't going to happen. The president's budget isn't going to happen. But one of the things that we talked really uh, talked a lot about was, OK, that's fine. But what we can't have is a compromise between current funding levels and what the president has proposed. Because current funding levels are already atrocious. Um, I want to challenge you to, to um, uh, think about how essential the affordability of a home is relative to the affordability of health care. These two things are, are intertwined. I mean, if you don't have affordable shelter, you don't have affordable health care, um, you, you're really out of luck. So with the same energy that you put towards health care, we need to continue to put that same level of energy towards the affordability of living in a society. The two-bedroom housing wage, what you have to earn to afford a two-bedroom apartment at fair market rent is $18.54. That's more than $4 above the average renter wage, but we all know that lots of extremely low income households make the minimum wage. If you're making the minimum wage, you'd have to work 102 hours to afford a two bedroom apartment at fair market rents. In, in Madison, um, Dane County, we're looking at uh, a housing gap for that extremely low income population of over 18,000. Um, and <laughs> that means that there's 18,000 people right now who can't get into housing that they can afford at 30% of their income. In the city of Madison, in the Madison Metro School District, that, that translates to 1,500 homeless school children identified by Madison Schools. And we know every week, dozens this summer, are being turned away from our family shelter. Um, we are serving 4% of the households in Dane County, outside of the city of Madison, who qualify for our program, just 4%. We're not making a dent in, in the need that is out there. Uh, housing is um, wildly unaffordable. The only two socioeconomic demographics that we see growing in our city are households making more than $100,000 a year, and households making less than $25,000 a year. And um, while the city, uh, while the mayor has, has put forth this plan for, you know, we're going to build a thousand new units every year, that's might keep up with the rate of growth. That's, from my perspective, that's not near ambitious enough if we're going to actually draw down the, uh, the vacancy rate. In Dane County, it would be a loss of seven million dollars for housing and community development if the budget passes as the president has proposed it. Um, it, a loss of $2.7 million in CDBG funding, $1.5 million in home funding. Those are the types of layers of financing that makes um, our local contributions work. You know, just over $4 million um, would come out of, um, out of the city's uh, CDBG and CDB funding. That would not only would, would uh, hurt our ability to invest in affordable housing, it would hurt our ability to um, uh, invest in reducing uh, homelessness, and frankly, it would cut three quarters of a million dollars just from CDD operating funds, like just paying staff and covering operating expenses for the city. That we'd have to fill that gap in the city's operating budget. But if we don't, you know, if we continue to take cuts at the federal level, we're going to be spending our small resources, lo local resources, on preserving affordable housing instead of creating new units. That means that gap just gets wider. So I'm not just saying influence Ron Johnson because he's a Republican and he doesn't agree with you know housing programs. I'm saying even for people who we know are supportive of our priorities, like Senator Baldwin and Representative Pocan, they have 25 different issues that they're juggling. You know, they're hearing from people about the environment and about healthcare and about education, and all of those things are extremely important. But they better be hearing about affordable housing also. When we think about federal issues, oftentimes it feels overwhelming. These concerns are, are too high level, they're too big, they're too far away. You know, how are we going to figure out how to make an impact at the federal level? Um, we have seen so much evidence in the past six months, in the past 60 days, that our voices can make a difference, right? On this fight for, uh, on this fight for affordable health care, the resistance, as Heidi pointed out, the resistance is working. Your voices, your communication, your advocacy is making a difference.